Hello Hi. everyone, I'm Judah. And I'm Zion. And this is And the we am- are the amateur film critics. Yeah. Talking over each other today. It's gonna be a good day when we start talking yeah. over each other. Yeah. So today this is kind of a two parter, but not really a two parter. We're, yeah. we're doing um so in this episode we're doing The Wizard of Oz from nineteen 19- 30 or 40 and uh yeah in the next episode we are doing return to oz uh, from the 80s made by two separate yes. companies the way <laughs> yeah and we'll go into like you know the create a little bit about how the returned oz got created in the first place when we get to that episode but that'll be next week's episode at the time you're watching this you, you're going to have oh, to wait okay. for that episode. But today we're talking about The Wizard of Oz, which is absolutely considered a classic. Wouldn't you agree? Yes. Yeah, I would say uh, in my research, I think this was the first movie to have, like, color in it. And, uh... uh I- That's shocking because I thought that the S was because I thought other films before this had color, but... Yeah, yeah. I... Apparently not. Yeah, and, you know, that's actually... The color thing is something that comes into play a lot because they go from, like, Kansas being black and white to uh, Oz yeah. being in color, which is quite an interesting, you know, film technique. I feel like that was something... Yeah, that was- very uh-huh. nuanced. I mean, obviously, color was very nuanced back then, but just like the idea of that transitioning from two different types of uh, film techniques, it was very interesting. But um, if you uh-huh. have somehow gone your entire yeah. life never seen Wizard of Oz, even though it's obviously one of the most iconic movies ever made, um, I'm going to give you a quick yeah, plot probably. overview that I stole yeah, from Google. Yeah. Uh, in my best podcasting voice, as I say. So, here I go. When a tornado rips through Kansas, Dorothy, <laughs> played by Judy Garland, and her dog, Toto, are whisked away in their house to the magical land of Oz. They follow the yellow brick road toward the Emerald City to meet the wizard. And en route, they meet the scarecrow, played by Ray Bolger, <laughs> that needs a brain, a tin man, missing a heart, and a cowardly lion who wants courage. The wizard asks the group to bring him the broom of the wizard of the wicked witch of the West to earn his help. That's the that's the movie. It's I gotta say, watching it again, I forgot that it is quite a strange movie when you think about it. Like it was one I think it was one yeah. of those movies that just the idea of it, the plot of it had become so uh uh famous that it felt normal thinking about it. But when you watch it, it came back to me and I was like, this is very strange. Yeah, it's not yeah. normal. Yeah, it has a weird plot. Uh, I think one of my favorite parts of this is in the opening, you meet uh, her family and the other Farm mm-hmm. workers and AC characters from that scene appear as different characters in yeah. the Wizard of Oz. Yeah, and that's and so a, that's I believe the, the Scarecrow, the Tin Man, and the Cowardly Lion yeah. were all characters. Are they were all were farm played hands. by yeah. the same actor as characters? Farm workers, and so that was probably one of the things about the film is mm-hmm. trying to recognize who each character was, you know. Yeah, they that's a very like fascinating thing that I actually want to talk more about just a little bit later. But first, I think I want to start our discussion topics at the very beginning, right? So, first of all, what do you think of Dorothy yeah. as a character? I think there's something this theme that we've kind of been going off of. What what do you think about Dorothy? As a character. Well, usually, you know, I find 
now that we're watching this, I find the main character is pretty blandish. Yeah. And this, but in this one, I feel bland for a purpose. I feel like she is meant to be bland. Yeah, she's meant to be the normalcy experiencing us. Yeah, she she is she is meant to be normal, mm-hmm. which all the other people find strange. I would say. Yeah, so, I I would agree with that. Um, interesting. Uh, in my that's opinion, awesome I sort of found her whiny at some points. I I know that's kind of stupid, but I don't know. I don't. I don't know where well, she got. I mean, I think she's. She is whiny for a purpose. Yeah. I feel like because books, I feel like we have to mention this. Where the robots will face off a book, and then yes. the book, um, Dorothy is played by a younger child, and in the movie, she's played by Judy Garland, or okay. who was not a child, obviously, and and so she she, she is kind of reacting to these things are she she's in a childlike she's kind sense. of her character's emotions were were meant to be how a child would would mm-hmm. react to to these things so, like for example when she's captured by the witch and she's missing her auntie M, those yeah. were meant to be said by a child and not a full grown. Yeah. Like, okay. S- that senior was in high school, I would say. That actually makes a lot more sense to me now so. that you uh, point paint it in that light. Um, <laughs> but uh, moving on, I think Kansas. I actually really enjoyed the part of the movie that was in Kansas, even though like that's not the point of the movie at all. Oh, uh, I I don't know why I enjoyed it. I just found it interesting. Right. <laughs> But there's not much to talk about in Kansas. Obviously, you're going to see things from Kansas get incorporated into um, the time spent in Oz, which is what kind of Zion was touching on. Uh, but moving on, Dorothy yeah. first arrives in Oz in a place called Munchkinland, which Munchkinland is strange. You know what I mean? All right, so we had to make a little background change here. Um, do we had some technical difficulties? I should say. Yes. Yeah, some technical difficulties, but we are now going to talk about Munchkinland, which, in my opinion, was strange. Yeah, it was. Um, I mean, all of Oz is supposed to be strange, but Munchkinland to me was yeah. probably the weirdest. Yeah, probably the weirdest part of the movie. Um, um, um so, and so, so the Munchkins. Are, I I really think the Munchkins are a mix of like well, go on, well, well, and and like ch- ch- children, and so it's obvious which yeah, which, <laughs> so. Oh yes, it is. It's very much obvious, but think, yeah. Think, uh, but I think one much. of my favorite parts, one of my favorite parts about Munchkinland, is Glenda appears. The good Glenda, the good witch, appears, and she's a prominent character, and she's okay, I guess. Which, but the entire time through this song, yes, yes. Oh wait, um. A thing I have to say is, and I believe there is a film theory out this. Why did it Glenda just tell her that the shoes could have sent her home in the beginning? Yeah, and I mean, they say thing. that she need to realize. <laughs> I it's quite I the whole thing about why Glenda couldn't tell her that was kind of strange. Uh-huh. But I'm not sure. I think they tried to explain at the end, but it's not really explained. Something about she had to find it in herself or something like that. Yeah. But Glenda during the entire Munchkin Land song sort of just stands there and smiles. 
And in my opinion, if you watch the facial expressions of Glenda, it is quite creepy. Yeah. <laughs> Which I know that's super stupid sounding, but it is. My other thing about this entire scene is Dorothy has not enough remorse over the fact that she just killed the Wicked Witch of the East. Yeah. <laughs> She, it, it, that fact for Dorothy really did not strike that much emotional issues yeah. that you think it would have. I, I kind of in the, see what the Wicked Witch of the East actually looks like besides just her legs. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I, I think I always wanted to do that too as a kid. Okay, and so... Um, the next, I think we talk about the three like main supporting <laughs> characters, which are the Scarecrow, the Tin Man, and the Cowardly Lion. Yeah, and in, in, in my opinion, Scarecrow and the Tin Man kind of have the same personality, whereas I think yeah, I see that. I think the one with the most personality is the Cowardly Lion, but, but yeah, so he has two songs in the film. As well. Mm -hmm, that's true. He does. He gets too solid. Which, Zion, you know, I don't have this planned out, but I think we should ask since you're our, like, you know, you, you decide which songs are certified bops in your opinion. So, what do you well, think is the best song in the movie? Best song in the movie? Hmm, that's a tough one. I know that Somewhere Over the Rainbow was very popular, but my mm -hmm. favorite song is um where the cowardly lion says about if he were the king of the forest i feel like that's the best really one. yeah what's your favorite okay all right I yeah mean, forgetting songs i i think i'm seeing over the rainbow right? by the way what yeah i'm sure that they, they aren't the most memorable songs this is yeah, like this is like a movie songs. that i don't think of being a musical yeah <laughs> You know what I mean, uh, though? Yeah, it's... yeah. I okay. think this could be a classic movie. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, as Dorothy's traveling down the Yellow Brick Road, she meets those people, but then they eventually get to the Emerald City, which is, I think, a key element of this. It's sort of... I, I don't know. There's not much to say about Emerald City. It's... Uh, oh, I think it's a great yes, example sure. of the set design of this movie, which is really good. Yeah, yeah, that's that was something I mean. Design. I think how yeah. this movie is to show off what sets I can pull off. You know? Yeah, like, it really is a great example of um, really good use of the special effects that they had at that time and the set uh, design, maybe, obviously. Yeah. But props, costumes, and special effects is like an actually very very impressive show of that, especially for it being 1939 or whatever it was. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, and then you meet the wizard. Yeah, again. The wizard is... Kind so of bland. The, yeah, so the... So, like, the, the man who plays the wizard actually appears um, not just in the scene back in Kansas, but but he also plays yes. plays many characters in Oz, which I don't know if those are also supposed to be the wizard or if those are supposed to be separate characters. I know. I was mm -hmm. kind of by that, but yeah, yeah, and uh, that 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 uh, that's a very interesting feature. But he sends them. To go get a broom <laughs> from the witch. He basically tells them to go kill the witch. You know what I mean? Well, witch. Uh, because he knows he's not an actual wizard. And so he's, he, he's trying to set yeah. on this impossible task to try to not break their feelings. You know, and hopefully they won't. Yeah. He, he hopes that they won't come back. You know. Okay. I'm going to be honest, this was sort of around the time where I think I might have started blanking out during this movie, yeah, I and I was not paying as much attention. Yeah, and so, okay, so next, um, 
talk about behind the scenes facts. Oh, do you have some behind the scenes facts for us? Uh, yes. So I've uh, so like I think the major one that I have to talk about is so there's a scene and it's during Munchkin Land where, where uh, uh, the witch basically the special effect and so they film like one take of that scene. And it's the scene we see in the film, but but then what I said, let's do a another take of that scene. And so basically, the mm-hmm. effect with the uh, fire for uh, the witch leaving that effect worked. There was a conveyor belt that lowered the witch down during the fire well apparently yeah. it it didn't work the it it, it 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 like malfunctioned and so but basically the witch caught on fire and had to be in the hospital for several months are you serious yes this is an, this is an actual oh my gosh that would be a ooh. <laughs> there was another... i can't believe that the yeah, it's... I can't believe that they were able to, like, even complete this movie. They must have been... Were they near the end of filming? Do You probably don't even know that, but... I can't believe they I, were able to... Like, they were able to even remember. continue yeah. filming the movie when that happened. Yeah, I don't remember if they were... Another behind-the-scenes fact is... Uh, I believe it was... Uh, another... A different actor was supposed to play the... Uh, either the Tin Man or the Sock Air Crow, and so... They had him do this, so, so like the actor who was supposed to play, say the the, the Tin Man, um, went went through like mm-hmm. a, a makeup test, and so the makeup they used had like oh, had, I had like a chemical in them that like made him not able to do the film. Just because of uh, my makeup on his face. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I think. Yikes! It seems. It, it, yeah, it is amazing that they that they were able to get this film done. And yeah. though, and those like you know, consider. I guess it was a different time. But yeah, it was a different time. Um, I didn't have all the special effects that we have now. But yeah, but they tried to work with what they had, and then I don't know if this is this isn't a behind the scenes fact, but there is an internet rumor, and you might have heard of this in the scene where, um, where where I believe it's the witch of, of, of approaches like Dorothy, the, the scarecrow, and yeah. the Tin Man. Uh, there was an internet rumor that in the background there was a it was maybe a little bit inappropriate. So if you don't want to hear this, like skip ahead. But there was an internet rumor that there was a hanging munchkin in the background, but that's never. Been I do know. Ever. I have that heard about that. That that is just a rumor. I have, um. but I don't know. Like. I believe it was disproven, but as I was watched, it, I could make me ache it out in the background. Oh, I see. So yeah, so, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, I'm looking at pictures of it. It's interesting. Detail. It looks like it could just be a hole in a tree, but at the same time, I see it. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Let's not go into too much detail because. It's All right, I, I find cool. that those are interesting little rumors. I I like those a lot. I love when you come up with those, Zion. But um, well, I didn't come up. Yes, so it's just a rumor I heard. Well, I mean, I, I did not come up, but I love when you show me the show those to me. I I find them interesting, you know. Yeah, little pieces of lore, or <laughs> not even lore at that point, just interesting stuff. Yeah, but um, <laughs> uh, the witch um. I want to know, is it ever explained why the witch melts when she gets hit with water? No, but 
I like that scene though. So, oh, here's this. Yeah, that's a very famous scene with a very famous quote. Unrelated topic that I feel needs to be said. And um, if if we can show like muted pictures or clips of this, like in front of us, yeah, I'll try to. That would be good. But there is a. There is a there is a apparently lost or there is a not released episode of Sesame Street, not released to the public, where the Wicked Witch from the Wizard of Oz visits Sesame Street, and I believe I believe they, they they have only showed showed this once. And I believe someone recorded some of it on on YouTube. I don't know if it's still up, but uh, uh, the witch is like mean to everyone. Uh, I believe she turns Big Burn into a feather. Mm-hmm. Such her at at one part, and <laughs> why it wasn't shown is I believe they showed it to kids, and kids were like fr- frightened by this episode and so they never like aired it it's only been shown yeah to do a small handful of people i'm looking at pictures right now yeah <laughs> i'm looking at pictures that's that's pretty funny um that is so strange but um so so i think we need to talk about the ending real quick which the yeah, ending is dorothy accepting that she wants to go home and all that and yeah. she clicks her heels three times she goes home yeah um so now what i like is the ambig- yeah but my favorite part of it is it's very ambiguous to whether or not oz is real yeah <laughs> you know I, what i mean yeah yeah i, yeah, yeah, I yeah, really like, like that opening tell tell which parts it's hard to tell a no if the which parts were real and which parts were just in her head. Yeah, you don't know you don't know if Oz was a dream or not. And there are like things that say it could because of and I think cause you brought this up, you have the same actors in it, and then she yeah. even goes as you have this you have the people from Kansas playing people in um Oz. Uh-huh. And yeah. like I think that's a very interesting part that they even touch on. But I like that, you know, just ambiguity. I think it really, I think it's a good, it makes for a very good ending. So with that said, yeah, with that said, what's your favorite scene in the entire movie? Scene of the film? Yes. Um, I mean, they're all, this is a classic, and I like all the scenes, but one that stands out and one I just die. Uh, Fain is uh, the Gar's reactions to the witch's death. I think that's my favorite part. Oh, yes. Because I find what he said. I forget what he says, but I just died laughing when I watched it again. <laughs> forget what he says. But yeah. That's my uh, favorite scene. I also like the, the effects of the um, wizard of that giant head, you know, that giant green head. Yeah. I like that. And so, yeah, what's your favorite? Yeah. I'm, I'm honestly not sure. I'm like, I think the uh, tornado scene is pretty cool, I must say. Yeah. Um, I actually cool. I thought that was like, you know, a very cool scene. <laughs> uh, also, And also, I like the, I like the, like a kind of emotional ending when she's saying goodbye to like the scarecrow and all that, and then she clicks her heels and goes goes away. I like that part yeah, too like for some reason. Uh, um, but I think it's all just interesting. Um, yeah. So, final thoughts and what are you gonna uh, rate it? Wait, we forgot to talk about our favorite character. Oh yes, we have favorite to talk about character. this. What okay, Zion? What so... do you think? But also, uh, as to why my, this is my favorite character, my favorite character is the, um, is the trees that throw the apples at Dorothy. And why it is my favorite is because 
in eighth in my eighth grade class was forced on Halloween to dress up as the Wizard of Oz. Yes. And so I dressed up as a tree. I don't know if we have pictures or not. If <laughs> if we can find pictures of it, I I'll see if I can find a picture. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah. But yeah, that's why I favorite. know. Yeah, that was that was funny. No, that oh, was. As far as my character, I'm gonna go with the Wicked Witch of the West because you know she's very this like uh, very iconic villain. I know it's yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh, that and Toto. Toto's also the best character. Equally good. Toto. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But, you know, Zion, now now the time has come, Zion. You have to give it a rating. Um, I'm gonna rate it... I believe, like... An... 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 Eight... Mm. Eight flying monkeys out of ten. Flying monkeys. Eight flying monkeys out of ten. Flying monkeys. Okay. okay. Wait. I'm actually, gonna. I'm gonna do. I do not know what I want to give it. I'm gonna change it to seven flying monkeys out of ten. I know. Oh. Because yeah. even though it is a classic, I just yeah. feels like it doesn't hold up as well. As it used to. And mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. I still found it as a good movie, don't get me wrong. Yeah. It just doesn't yeah. as well. I agree. I, so. I agree it's a good movie. I think in some ways it's kind of a little too strange, or maybe like, you know, just doesn't make sense at one point. Yeah, there's um, doesn't make sense. But I think it's a, I think it's a good movie. I think it's classic. Um, and at that point, I want to give it, I feel bad for giving it this, but I want to give it 3.5 stars out of 5 stars. I mean, don't feel bad. We are in a modern era, and and we do have yeah. movies, and and we used to. Back, back then, this was probably the greatest movie of all time. Now, yeah. we have just more options, I know. So. We just, yeah, there's... I'm sure at the time it was, like, just so incredible. But with that said, that is the Wizard of Oz line. Any last words? No, not last words. I mean... And and before we go, I have to plug this in. Uh, We need 50 subscribers, and and I will release the Dr. Floor video. Uh, There's a video all about Mm -hmm. Check it out. It's probably, I, I edited myself this time, so got some good editing in it. Yeah, but, he did a good job. 50 yeah, that's subscribers. Right. So, 50 subscribers. Yeah, so please subscribe. Please. And subscribe. um, let, uh, so follow, follow us on, us on Instagram. Instagram. There's a link yeah. in the description. And that's it. Goodbye, y'all. And comment down below what films you guys might, yeah. might like us to cover next. So yes, goodbye, y'all. that's a great point. We need we need movies to watch, y'all. Goodbye, y'all. Bye. <laughs>